And I'm going to have a bite of this uh, and be very critical if you okay. don't mind. Yeah? Okay. okay, go for it. <laughs> oh boy. Welcome back to season two of the sandwich series where I find the most popular sandwiches from around the world and recreate every single element from scratch. If you're new to the series, don't worry. I've got the entire first season, all 12 episodes on the Pro Home Cooks front page, the YouTube page. But before you check those out, you're gonna wanna stay tuned because for episode one of season two, we've got a very special one, the most requested sandwich of all time from all of you out there, the Donor Kebab. But what really threw me off was that everyone requesting the sandwich was German. And I always thought the sandwich was from Turkey. So on top of making the sandwich today, we're gonna to be doing a deep dive into the history and how it became so popular in Germany. But before we do that, we gotta get on the ground and sample this thing. And there's really only one place I know to get a proper German donor kebab. Check, 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 check. Uh, my name is Erkan Emre, and uh, I am the owner and the founder uh, of Koti Berliner Döner Kebab. First, give me the pronunciation. Let's get that out of the way. Uh, <laughs> is it Döner Kebab? It's Döner. Dön okay, the Döner. The authentic Turkish way to say it is Döner. But if you say it in German, we say Döner. 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 Ah. So you could say it in Turkish, which is Döner, or you say it in German, which is so why were there not many uh, kebab places in the U.S. or in New York specifically? And what made you open up this place? You know, I do not know the answer to that. My history and my background is not in the uh, cooking uh, field or the restaurant field. I am actually an architect. Uh, for about 15 years I was an architect. I became a developer later on. And at one point I was so hungry for the Berliner style Döner Kebab that I went on to Google and typed in the words Berliner Döner Kebab and I got zero result. I, uh, it, it was astonishing. And later on, I acknowledged that maybe there was a history of the Döner Kebab that could be slightly different from what I'm used to. Mm. And I saw several dozen restaurants, I went to a few of them, but none of it would serve what I grew up with, the Berliner Döner Kebab, which is this delicious focaccia-like Turkish pita bread that is lightly toasted with uh, sesame. I missed all this and I said, if no one does it, I'll do it. I'll purchase a uh, small, it's about a foot and a half tall vertical rotisserie. And I made one for myself. I had friends over. Uh, and they said, this is incredible. This is one of the best sandwiches we've ever had. So it really fueled me and we applied to Smorgasburg, which is an incredible outdoor market. And it served almost like a springboard for us. Uh, you know, we were three people, now we're 25 people. We have two full-time locations. Wow. Uh, we have a third one coming up at Brooklyn Navy Yard by the summer of 2020. And uh, we couldn't be happier with the resonances so far. It's just like the perfect sandwich, right? It's got sauce, it's got meat, it's got good bread, I mean, it's veggies. the perfect thing for the urban dweller and Germans are busy just like Americans are busy they wanted to have something quick something healthy on the go and that's really how the uh, inspiration for the Döner Kebab came about so yeah. this bread is about 12 inches in diameter okay lightly crusted with sesame you can see how I'm pressing on a pretty fluffy bread it goes into our toaster so we basically cut them first in halves then we cut them into quarters. So it was brought over uh, in the 70s. And then I think over the course of the last 40 years, it also changed and evolved. The Turkish immigrants quickly noticed that Germans love sauces. I think it is fair to say that the inspiration and the roots are Turkish, but it is a German staple. All right, and then we grab the chicken that is thinly sliced and we distribute it carefully. Tomato cucumber with hint of dill. So you go in here. Red onions, raw red onion, raw red onion, feta cheese, crumbled feta cheese with a little bit of white sauce. I was on the architecture path as well. You were you were an architect. Now you're in the food business. What's your favorite part about it? I mean, I tell you, I get up every morning thinking how many thousands of mistakes am I going to do today? <laughs> so I love the learning process. Yeah. Uh, I love being with people. And I think I acknowledge that very soon, not just to be with my own staff, but also to be with people who are customers. You know, I hang out at the cash register. I yeah. serve food. I meet uh, 
uh, people like yourself that are interested in this. So it allows me to get an insight uh, from their point of view and also to help them understand a little bit where I come from, right? I am almost a Turkish inspired person, yeah. right? Born and raised to Turkish people in Germany. So that food that is a Turkish inspired sandwich, right? Uh, is literally the same thing. Yeah. It is German in all of its fibers, right? So Ericom was nice enough to give me an entire bread loaf right here for recipe comparison because I love this bread. And you know when it comes to sandwiches, it's all about the bread. The rest of the stuff is important, but if you don't get the bread right, you're not gonna get the sandwich right. He made me promise to not give up the source though, but this will be huge. And what I really love about this bread is that it was super flaky on the inside. And I studied a ton of different Turkish bread recipes online, and there's a lot of ways to obtain this type of result. So I figured I would just kind of wing it. At this point, I'm pretty good at making bread from doing so many different breads on the sandwich series, and I have an idea of what I wanna do for the bread, the first thing you're gonna do is warm up some milk and some water. Then take a large bowl, add your warm milk and water, a little bit of sugar, your instant yeast, and then I added a little bit of sourdough starter just for some extra flavor in there, but that is completely optional. And then add one cup of flour and give it a good stir. And remember, I'm doing this all by feel, so I'm just gonna keep adding flour until I get more of a dough mass. And it's gonna be super sticky. It's gonna be a wet dough, but that's exactly Exactly what I'm going for. I want that fluffy crumb and that's gonna come from a nice hydrated dough. Let this rest for 20 minutes and then you're just gonna perform some gentle stretch and folds. You can't really knead it because it's so sticky. So you're just gonna stretch and turn the dough over a few times and then you're gonna let the dough rise for another hour until it's doubled in size. Once your dough is rested and it's visibly puffy, take it out of the bowl onto a floured surface because it's gonna be super sticky. So you wanna make sure your surface is nice and floured. Then cut your dough ball into about two pieces. I did one big piece and one small, depending on how big you want your bread. And then give them both a rough shape into a small dough ball. Now place your dough onto some parchment paper on a tray and just start flattening out your dough. You don't wanna roll out your dough because you're gonna lose all of that air. So you just want to gently push it down until you get that circular shape. And then the last step is to egg wash your dough to get some really nice color when it's baked. And then we're gonna sprinkle on some sesame seeds and then some nigella seeds, which is classic for Turkish bread. Now you're gonna let those proof for about an hour until they gain a little fluffiness. And in the meantime, you're gonna preheat your oven to 385. And then once that oven is preheated and your dough is nice and fluffy, you can throw those in to bake. There we go. Whoa. Wow, that really puffed up. You can almost tell that if you, if you put up this bread, well, first of all, the size. I thought this was similar, but this is actually a lot bigger, but I like the size of it. These are pretty massive because you cut them in four for the actual sandwich. And you can kind of tell that this, it's super airy and it almost deflates a little bit. Like this one, it looks like it was airy at some point and then it deflated and created these little crevasses. So we'll see what happens to this as it sits. The bread deflated a little bit and it does have these crevices now, just like this. These breads are very similar, but you can see I used an egg wash and the, the milk on top of this. And it looks like they don't use any type of coating uh, to get color for their bread. Check that out. It's a little fluffier but there are some nice holes in there. There's some airy pockets when you compare the two. This is definitely a little more dense, more pockets, but I am, I'm very happy with the way this guy came out. Look how that holds up. Just like from the restaurant, a nice pouch to just stuff it in. Really solid, not falling apart. Perfect bread right there.
Now, of course, humans have been grilling meat over fire for thousands of years, but the word doner kebab doesn't show up until the 18th century in the Ottoman Empire, now Turkey. The word doner translates to rotate or turn, and the word kebab comes from the root to fry or to burn. So basically you have some type of turning grilled meat or rotating roast. And the first painting of this was actually found in 1616 in the Ottoman Empire. But the massive transformation of this dish happened in the 1850s when Ottoman chefs realized that if you turn the spit vertically that the fat would drip on the meat and you wouldn't lose all that delicious fat over the fire, which makes a ton of sense. Fat is delicious and you want it basting your meat. So in Turkey, lamb would be the preferred meat, which is sliced thin and served over a plate of rice and salad. But there are other styles of the dish like doner durum, which is meat wrapped up in Turkish flatbread. The doner kebab continued to spread throughout the Middle East, becoming shawarma in Arabic countries and even tacos El Pastor in Mexico. But the question is, how did this sandwich become so popular in Germany, possibly even more popular in Germany than in Turkey? Well, if we jump forward a few decades to post-World War era, at that time, Germany decided to bring in guest workers from other countries to increase the labor force, the largest population of these guest workers being Turkish. And of course, they're going to want to bring over some of that Turkish deliciousness to Germany. It's believed that the originator of the donor in Germany goes to one of those guest workers named Kadir Nerman, who was in the printing business, but quickly realized there weren't many good quick and delicious lunch options for working Germans. So he decided to start slinging the doner kebab in 1972. But rather than serving up a big plate of food, he chose to make the dish more portable, wrapping up the meat and the salad in a Turkish flatbread, making it much more convenient for the workers to eat. So basically he helped transform the doner kebab into uh, fast food in Germany. And if you fast forward today, the doner kebab is the number one fast food in Germany and it is a late night staple. When it comes to choosing the proper meat for your kebab, you really can go with whatever you want. If you're in Germany, you're gonna see mainly beef and chicken, but if you go to the Middle East, you'll see a lot of lamb. You can use pork as well. It's really up to you. I'm gonna use chicken thigh because chicken thigh is delicious and it's also fatty, so it's not gonna dry out when it's rotating on that spit. But we do need to make a marination for this to maximize flavor. We're gonna let it marinate overnight. So I'm just gonna head over to the spice rack pull a bunch of spices, grind them up, marinate this delicious chicken. Here are the whole spices that I'll grind up. Cinnamon, coriander, chili, cardamom, cumin seeds, thyme, and oregano. And then I'll add in some powdered spice. Now, once you've turned those spices into a powder, I'm just gonna add a few more ground spices. I've got some garlic powder and a little bit of smoked paprika. Now get your chicken thighs into a bowl and make sure they are boneless and skinless. You can keep on the skin if you want, but I doubt it's going to render out, at least on my machine. And to the chicken, I added some lemon juice, a little bit of olive oil, and three heaping tablespoons of that spice mix and made sure to coat the chicken evenly. And then you can just let that marinate overnight for maximum flavor. So I wasn't gonna get this thing, but I saw Sorty Food did a review on it. And it didn't look half bad. And I figure if we're gonna do proper kebab, we need some sort of proper machine, even if it's not the best. This is my donor uh, machine. We've got the electric coil back here and then you kebab up the, the chicken and that rotates, heats it from that back coil. And then you get that nice sear from the outside on the chicken. And that's what you're going for. That's the key. And it's really hard to do it unless you have some type of machine. So I'm interested in how this works. So Ericon also gave me a little sampling of the white sauce. I really liked their white sauce. Um, it's, you know, it's a basic street meat style white sauce. The main difference being it's yogurt based, but when I taste it, I get a good bit of mayo. So I'm gonna split the yogurt and the mayo. And I think when you have a mayo and a white sauce, it really balances out the tanginess of the yogurt. So I'm just gonna do a standard white sauce, but this right here, if you don't get this right, your sandwich ain't gonna be that tasty. You need a flavorful white sauce. 
It's really simple to make this classic white sauce in a mixing bowl. I'm going in with about three quarter cups of yogurt to half a cup of mayo. I thought that would be a nice ratio. And then I added the zest of a lemon as well as half of the juice of that lemon and grated in one clove of garlic on the microplane so it's nice and fine. And then some chopped up dill, added a little bit of salt and then stirred that together. Give your sauce a sample to adjust to your own taste buds. And if you like it a little more acidic, you can add a little lemon juice. If you like it more salty, of course, add a little more salt. And then just pop that into a squeeze bottle and let that sit and really marinate and develop its flavor overnight. Forget making a kebab. This is just something you should have in your fridge at all times. So good. And this is just going to get better as it marinates all that garlic, all that lemon juice. Keep it in the fridge. And that should keep for a while, maybe a month. I really wanted to make a homemade harissa sauce. It's so important to get a nice spicy sauce on your sandwich. So I have a really simple recipe for just a spicy harissa. I preheated my oven to around 450 degrees and took out a pan and threw on one bell pepper along with a bunch of red chilies. I'm using Fresno chilies and I just coated them in a little bit of oil, threw them in the oven for about 15 minutes to 20 minutes until they were super dark and roasted up. Now you're gonna peel off the outer skin of your chilies. You don't want any of that in your sauce. And then depending on the spicy level you want, you can remove some of the seeds of your chilies. I'm going to remove pretty much all the seeds except for one or two of those Fresno chilies. Now to a blender, you're going to add in your peppers, three cloves of garlic, an eighth of a cup of white vinegar, and just blend for around one minute. Next, I'm going to add in the spice mix that I made for the chicken. I want an extra layer of flavor rather than just having those chilies. All those spices are really going to help out this sauce, but you can use whatever spice mix you have lying around the house. And I'm also going to add one table spoon of olive oil and then just blend that smooth for about three to four minutes until you get a beautiful harissa sauce and of course you got to add that to the squeezy bottle so this has been cooking for a good hour i'm not getting the brownage that i'm looking for but you're getting some serious fat drippage fat infusion which is really the point of the rotisserie so i'm going to slice some chicken off for the sandwich and we'll just keep it going and see if uh, it browns a little more go the completed sandwich all that work but i would say that that's that's close to a masterpiece look at the sauce this is this is a messy sandwich but a beautiful one let's do it similar to when i tasted air cons it's very light mm -hmm. yeah. you know the bread is light you've got Pretty much a salad in there. Yeah. And that's what makes this thing so great. It's very balanced. My only issue is just the meat not really getting the sear. It's, you know, the meat is juicy and it's delicious, but I like more of a- Texture. Yeah, more texture, a little more flavor from the coloring. Mm -hmm. But other than that- It's good. The bread, I'm proud of the bread. It's almost like a salad bread bowl, like. Yeah. It's a bread cup for a salad, basically. <laughs> it really, they created something special. We made this and it was delicious, but Aircon's actually gonna come over. He hit me up on Instagram. He wanted to judge it himself. So he should be here in about 15 minutes. Um, and I'm excited to see what he thinks. The man is back. He's come to sample. <laughs> I love this machine. Well, you that might love it. Wait, what, what the seen. hell? Now it's working. Well, that's good. That wasn't red for like the last hour. Now it's working great. This is where homemade meets store prepared. We've got, we've got the master. Wow. It cuts beautiful. It's very presentable. Yeah. 
It looks like a döner. It seems like it's perfectly executed. I can see the meat, I see the sauces, I see the red cabbage. I'm gonna try the meat by itself first. I made a homemade spice marination for the meat. The meat is incredible. I think the sourcing of the meat is critical. Mm. It's perfectly seared and grilled. It has a nice uh, mix of spices in there. I'd love to know what spices you used. My secret. Your secret. My secret. Now um, you're trying to steal my trade And I'm going to have a bite recipes. of this uh, and be very critical if you okay. don't mind. Yeah? Okay. okay, go for it. <laughs> oh boy. This man traveled all over, all over from Germany, but obviously, how many how many shops do you think you've been to in your life? Maybe three dozens, just in Berlin. Okay. No. It's very flavorful. Um, you have a texture that is both crispy, there's a softness of the bread. The outside uh, is slightly crispy. I wish it was a little bit more crispy. That's more crispy. how I like it. Well, you know, I said, I think it's time that I invest in a panini machine. Yes, but I think this gets away mm. uh, as a, nearly perfect uh, doner kebab meat. What's your biggest critique? I would say the bread is such an important part of this yeah. meal. It really delivers the product. In this case, it might be a little bit too fluffy. Mm, see, this was Overall, a huge difference. Fluffy. I um, couldn't figure out how your bread, it's almost like a sourdough consistency yeah. where it's, it's, uh, it's not so fluffy. Like it's not no. made with baker's no. yeast, but I no. couldn't. That was hard. But you did an amazing job. I Thank mean, you. You did it overnight, it feels like, and you... This was two days. Two, two days. days. <laughs> okay. I feel this is a perfect eight out of 10. Okay. Okay. Um, well, a perfect eight out of 10, that, that's, that doesn't make sense, right? <laughs> eight is pretty close to the 10, so... 